Well, you know, I lived in Hawaii. Uh, the thing that was strange to me, because I'm from a small town in the south, you know, and I grew up around a lot of racism, you know. Um, not necessarily people that I hung out with, but it's just there, you know. And there's no way to avoid it. You just, you're going to see it somewhere sometime. And, um, you know, and going to Hawaii, it was, it was like my situation was reversed because instead of being the part of the majority, I was suddenly in the minority, you know, being a white person, a howling, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked for a medical supply company and, and everybody I hung out with were locals. I mean, you know, it was just that way. They were the people who were really nice to me. But I also saw a lot of anger, you know, a lot of anger and some outright kind of hatred, you know. None of it really was directed at me in a physical way or a way that was like violent or whatever, but it was just very raw and very like, you know, it was just there. And um, now, a few weeks ago, uh, you know, this group uh, association um, in Hawaii, uh, they took over the palace and chained all the doors shut. And it was a largely symbolic move, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you and I talked about this earlier. But um, I was just wondering what your thoughts. You're a native Hawaiian. You know, your family's in Hawaii. It's your home, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, I just was wondering what your thoughts were. Because I've never had the chance to sit down with a person like you and say, how do you feel, you know? And I know that's a really big question. But, well, you, you know. know. Um, I definitely think that there could be something where, you know, like, something set up for Hawaiians to govern themselves and just, you know, feel independent and, you know, like, I'm all for a nation within a nation, you know, like, like how Native Americans have their reservations. I think, hey, why not, why can't Hawaii have a reservation like that, you know? Not necessarily a reservation, but like, you know, certain, certain, a certain way to govern ourselves, you know? Like, why can't that happen, you know? Like, what's wrong with that, man? You know what I mean? Just because, you know, and it's kind of hard, man. If you want to, like, stay stay neutral, you know, at the same time. And then, you know, like, you see things. And I personally, in, in regards to that overthrow or, like, taking back the, the palace, I thought that was pretty cool. But to have somebody, I think what I heard, was that there was this guy and he said that he was the king and that he wanted to take back his throne. That's, that's so what what um, oh yeah, man. The king. Yeah, he said that he wanted to go sit on his throne, you know, and I was just like, wow, man. You know, I thought that well, was pretty disrespectful if he did sit on King Kalakaua's throne, you know. Really? And I just thought, man, like, yeah, I believe that maybe certain things should be returned to like you know a hawaiian kingdom and i i'm all for that i'm super supportive of you know hawaiian rights and hawaiian culture and you know i definitely i definitely can see where there's there could be like you know positive things you know that would come from it but for that guy to like just overthrow the palace and say that he wanted to sit on his throne, it's like, who is he to be like, this is my throne? Hey man, you know. There's enough blood to go around. Go I back, think a lot of people could be king. Man, if you, if, no, but if you go back to it, like how could he say he was a king when he's not like a direct descendant of the Kamehamehas, you know what I mean? And it's like the Hawaiian monarchy, if you know anything about it, you know that La Kapuaiva, who was King Kamehameha V, he was the last Kamehameha, and he died, and he had no heirs. There were no heirs to the throne. But anyway, it's like, dude, he died, and he didn't leave an heir, you know what I mean? So in my mind, there could be no heir to the throne, because if there was, there'd be a Kamehameha the sixth. And after Kamehameha the fifth died, they had to vote for for a king or a ruling you know monarch and um, it's like dude if there was ever to be 
a reinstated monarchy we'd have to vote for that you know that ruling official it's not like you could, anybody could just go and sit on the throne because if that's the case i'm the queen and i want to sit on my throne you know what i mean like so that's what i was I, I told my friend i was like what that doesn't make sense at all like you know i think he was just like radical and just wanted to like make waves yeah, yeah. which is cool man i like that i'm a rebel myself you know mm -hmm. I like, I like to meet waves. It's largely, I think, a symbolic gesture. I mean, you know, they didn't go in there violently, you know, so... I, I think they got taken out and they went peacefully. Yeah, I once, mean... Once, uh, you know, proper authorities came and, like, did away with it. I really hope he didn't sit on that throne because it's, like... To me, I think it's disrespectful, man. Yeah, I can see that. Not to just, like... It's presumptuous. It's, it's what it or is. Queen Ili or Kalani, you know what I mean? It's presumptuous. Yeah, man. Who is he? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I felt a sense of kind of like cultural displacement. And it was almost like a rage when I was there. And it was under the surface. Been like abusers, you know, like of their family. Like were involved in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And I... I um, this man that I grew up knowing, his name is Earl Kava'a, and he has this program now. It's funded by Kamehameha Schools. And um, he takes all these men who are like domestic violent offenders, you know, whatever. And um, he teaches them their culture. He takes them to the tarot patches and teaches them to farm and like teaches them other cultural things too and like how to build a canoe. And I think that when Hawaii's economy changed from like a subsistent economy to one that was dependent on like you know imported Commerce. or like imported goods or like you know exactly when money got involved in in Hawaii I think that took away from from people's pride or like you know knowing what to do you know hey I know this guy or like families they're like super good at you know making nets for fishing and like catching fish and you know making like cooking traditionally you know what i mean and all these wonderful things but it's like you know maybe their kids they go to school and they're like the dropouts you know and it's like oh man that guy's a loser but no he's not a loser man he has other qualities that you know people with like diplomas or degrees or whatever may not have you know he has like the common sense kind of knowledge the hands-on knowledge the if there was no electricity what would i do kind of knowledge you know what i mean and i think that's really important and i think that not a not a lot of people value it as much as they should you know i think that's so smart man and look I'm on this tour with Jack Johnson and he's all about sustainability, ordering food that's locally grown and at every venue, you know what I mean? And I think that's such a beautiful thing, you know, for the environment, but it makes sense. And I think that, man, we turned away from that a long time ago because it was special to have a pear from Chile, you know what I mean? Or whatever. It's like, you know, what about sticking to your roots and like appreciating whatever is you know from that piece of land not being at, dispossessed you know? yeah man and then it's like oh man all these people are working so hard to get things that aren't naturally from this one area you know it's like oh you see worth or value in things that don't naturally come from like wherever you're from you know and that's kind of sad, you know, it's like, but everybody does it.